on news you can use, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things. First of all, we're going to talk about skimpflation. Skimpflation, that's a new word that you're going to hear kicked around uh, the, the news cycles coming up. Uh, skimpflation is essentially doing and getting the same thing that you got before in terms of a good or service with less um, value. So in other words, if you go to a restaurant and you used to have two servers uh, continually asking you to fill your glass, make sure you have everything, and now you don't even have one, um, your service is way down. A lot of you folks have seen this and commented to us about uh, you know, what you're spotting out there in the economy. You're not even uh, finding enough service to get your food there on time and so on and so forth. That's skimpflation. You're paying the same price for less quality and less service. And it is it is a an inflationary thing. Um, it is it is a uh, kind of out of view type thing, but we all experience it on a daily basis. So uh, another way to look at it is you go to a store like Walmart where you expect to find everything, but because they haven't been able to offload containers fast enough or get them on trucks or trucks aren't available to get them across country, uh, instead of you know six choices of ketchup, you have one. Uh, that that essentially is skimflation. Even if the prices haven't gone up, your choices have narrowed. Your quality and level of service has gone down, and and skimpflation is a real thing. Uh, we'll talk about it a little more detailed on Thursday. We're going to have to do a little bit more deep dive into the economy, so we'll talk about that. Um, the the second item of news you can use is one that I've talked about for about two to three weeks. And I really believe this is gonna be one of these uh, things that brings down this house of cards in the housing business, and it's Zillow. Um, we've, we've talked about it, we've seen the early indications that Zillow overpaid for a number of houses. Um, there are all kinds of investigations that are just starting right now, but at first glance, it looks like Zillow has overpaid uh, at a minimum 12,000 houses across the country. Uh, they've got 7,000 on the market right now that they consider excess inventory. The only reason somebody would consider excess inventory is either they the market is turned and there aren't as many buyers and the absorption rate is not as quick, or they've overpaid. And in, I think we're seeing now both cases where that's, that is the issue. Um, I predict there'll be a lot of government, you know, searching and looking at this thing to see exactly what happened because... What they did was use, of course, private investor stockholder money uh, to go out and buy houses. They let the this AI that they've got, they've got an artificial intelligence making all the offers for them. There was you know, nobody that could fog a mirror that was actually looking over a lot of cases, any of these purchases. And what they were doing to a certain degree, it is a market frothing. It's essentially what some of these guys who were in jail have done they bought at the top of the market. They created, if you think back to the movie Trading Places, uh, for those of you who have ever seen it with Dan Aykroyd, Denny Murray, Murphy, Murray um, they, they pumped a lot of money into a stock to get it to rise uh, and actually sold their stock. And then they bought it, uh, you know, when the market turned down. And that is the same thing that Zillow does. When, when they buy at the very top of the market, they're thinking we can help boost that market 5% because we're buying all the available inventory. So there's less inventory and the market's gonna go up five, 10%, that type of thing. What happens is when they run out of money to do this, all of a sudden, instead of going up 5%, it stays the same for a short period of time. That's happened over the last couple of months. And then the market's turned down and that's happening right now. And so there are a number of cities where they are horrendously upside down because the market prices have dropped uh, the fastest. And the number one market, um, and uh, you guys have probably read about this, is Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix is where they bought most of, uh, in terms of all the houses they bought, they had their largest concentration in Phoenix. Uh, you know, Some of the indications I'm seeing in Bloomberg and some of the other reports indicate 20 to 30% in some cases over where the real market will be. Um, but you think about it like this. It, once again, if there are 100 homes for sale in a particular zip code, and there are 100 new homes every month, and there are 100 buyers every month, that's kind of a parity type thing. Now, what happens is because some buyers want this product or that product, not all 100 sell, 
and not all 100 buy. And so that basically what you look at in the real estate economy is a six month supply. Six month, they figure all 100 of those homes will be absorbed by those 100 buyers. They'll all buy a house or they'll all sell a house. And so that's market parity. Uh, when there are 100 sellers and of the 100 buyers, 80 of them are Zillow, now you've only got 20 buyers for 100 homes. So by the time three months goes by, you've got 300 homes, maybe 60 buyers, and now it's gone the other direction. Earlier this year, February, March, you might have 300 buyers and 50 sellers. So we're going the other direction because with Zillow, and I, I suspect Open Door may be in the same position, um, although they have more human eyeballs on deck than what Zillow does, um, you know, you may have the biggest market force in terms of buyers that have caused this froth to pull out of the marketplace. And uh, as we talked the last couple of weeks, Zillow's first announcement was about 10 days ago when they said, we're going to stop buying for the year. Um, essentially, when you read between the lines, it means they run out of cash, which means that the the, the Ponzi scheme, I don't, I'm saying this, this is my term, not what anybody's accused them of, but from an outsider's view, it's almost like a Ponzi scheme. They, they were pumping and dumping on these houses to keep those prices up. When they run out of money, they're not buying anymore and the prices instead of going up are going down. And you're going to see that in various parts of the country. And I suspect that Zillow uh, at some point is going to be on the, the wrong end of a congressional investigation to see exactly what went wrong. Um, you know, they, they clearly have uh, messed with this marketplace. And, and you think about it, the, the numbers that I'm seeing on Bloomberg two days ago, there's 2.8 billion of houses that they just put on the market. That's a lot of houses. Um, you know, that's way more than would be going on a monthly basis, uh, you know, in, in terms of something they would want to sell. Um, they have spent investor money to buy these houses and they've created this unnecessary froth in the marketplace to raise prices way up. Um, and, you know, we've, we've said all along that, you know, as, as you guys all know, real estate is very uh, location based. You know, it's, it's all about where it's at. There are some markets where the prices are continuing to go up, but I'm going to give you some real life examples of where the peak happened, even in those markets within the last two, three weeks, and it's gone down. Uh, and certainly in, the, in the, the type of product that Zillow, Open Door buy, which are the kind of higher end starter homes uh, or the lower end luxury homes, um, they have created, I believe, an unnecessary pricing cliff that came up. And these are the kind of things that when the first straw breaks, the whole thing comes down. So we'll keep an eye on it. We'll let you guys know. Um, you, you can't find, you can't open any newspaper or any online news source today without reading something about this Zillow problem. But I would expect to see others, maybe Open Door and maybe some of these others, uh, who've been big buyers either completely pull out of the market or have this same exact thing happen to them. And so I will keep you guys updated, but expect this to have a definite tampering effect on the prices of houses going up. We're already seeing where used to get six offers over ask. Now you're getting one or two and they're at ask or even a little bit below. And so I'll, uh, like I said, I'm going to, here in the next week or so, I'm going to give you a real example of a house uh, that just went into escrow. It's going into escrow today, and it's in one of these markets. And uh, it is the first house that has been sold in the zip code below the asking price, uh, you know, which was, it's still a great price and it's still 10% more than it was a year ago but it's not 15 or 20% more than it was a year. And the market, like I said, is starting to head south. So we'll see how that goes. All right.